defensive line is going to be stacked. You know who else was stacked? LSU in 2003 and USC in 2003. Oh, we're going, we're going here already? And Let's go yeah, here already. I would have loved to see that matchup a lot closer to then, but we're going to get it now, so I guess we'll take it. I want to see it whenever I can see it, Mario. I am, I'm fired up for this because, I, I look, I don't know if US, USC's fan base is going to really be as, as fired up around that, whole, around that whole narrative or not. But one thing's for certain. If you saw social media yesterday... The people here haven't forgotten, and nor should you, because I remember, you remember, it was like LSU's first, it was, a, it was a grand occasion for everybody down here. It was the first national championship since 1958. It was the first one that many LSU fans ever got to see. It's something you had wanted for so long. And once the AP named USC the champion went against the agreement that was in the BCS that the BCS champion is recognized by all as the national champion, because of USC standing in college football at that time, it was like LSU's championship never happened. It, it really, it felt that way. It was, you had to sit there the next year when USC is facing Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl for the national championship and hear all about how they were going back to back. Took like, some of the shine off. Like sure. LSU yep. never defeated Oklahoma. Yeah. In my head, they definitely won that game, but I definitely feel what you're saying, and that's you know led to all the tension that's kind of built up between these two programs besides that, because not only do you have that angle, but you also have Coach O at LSU. We'll see if he's still at LSU. You know, nothing is guaranteed, but assuming he is, that's going to be talked about a lot, and that's such a big what-if for me, Musso, because... You know, you, you can argue what you want about the context of that year. You know, USC uh, loses to Kansas State, gets blown out towards the end of that season and doesn't get in that game. But to me, I would have loved, loved, loved to see LSU play USC in that game in the Superdome back then and not Oklahoma. I, I'll put it right up there with Saints and Patriots in 2019 in games that I really wish happened. So I wish LSU could have just squashed that whole narrative from playing that game the same way I wish the Saints could have squashed the narrative from the no call from playing the New England Patriots. That would have been a much better game than what the Rams gave them. So it's really unfortunate that did not happen. It's really unfortunate that people try to claim the split national championship. But again, uh, I wish we would have got it a long time ago. We are getting it now. And I'm very much looking forward to this game and very much looking forward to LSU hopefully putting and, a weapon on these and, guys. And, and here's the thing. I don't blame USC for claiming the national championship. That's exactly what they should do. I mean, they got awarded a national championship. Yeah. You, don't, you don't give it back, okay? I yeah. Mean, that, 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 the, the issue is, is far reach of that. And they, look, it costs great you know, banter between the fan bases. I, I'm really curious, Mario, if there if there is LSU and USC, they've played twice in football. Ever. Yeah. Yet LSU fans don't like USC at all. No. Like at all. And it, it stems from a lot of that stuff. And you brought up the Coach O angle, and that's absolutely another caveat to this game that is so intriguing because it, it reminds me back to when Coach O took the job here and you know the first matchup with Ole Miss came about and, and look he down he downplayed it and whatnot but you knew that that game did it it meant something extra to him and oh, yeah. when it comes time in 2024 for this he will downplay it like it's it's nothing but coach o remembers that he wasn't country club enough for <laughs> usc he wasn't la enough for usc a place where he he grinded it out as an assistant and helped pete carroll win national championships i mean a, a place he has a great fondness for it. He will remember that. Yeah. And it he'll downplay it, but it will mean something different and something more special. And he will want to win that game very much. Oh, yeah. And LSU fans should want to win that game much more than they want to beat Ole Miss, too. Because one thing is getting fired because you have a terrible record and it's based on your performance like it was at Ole Miss. But Coach O at USC did the exact same thing he did at LSU. They rallied them after after they fired Lane Kiffin, finished with a 6-2 and two record, uh, lost a little steam towards the end, similar to Coach O in 2016, but was not given that job. But it's not the fact that he wasn't given the job, but they give it to Steve Sarkeesian. He's at Texas now. We're very happy for him. But remember, USC lets go of Coach O. They bring in Sark, and he's drinking and taking pills before you know meetings and press conferences. They definitely come out of that not looking too good. And USC is a team that always try to, tries to claim uh, you know, blue blood status. I remember getting in so many arguments uh, with my colleagues in college when I worked for the Daily Reveille about LSU. You know, in their minds, LSU was not a blue blood and USC was. And in my head, I'm like, why? You know, they were really good. 
those teams in the mid 2000s were stacked, but ever since then they've done very very little. I mean, a few years ago you win the Rose Bowl with Sam Darnold, you lose in the Cotton Bowl in Sam Darnold's last year, but you take that away, Holiday Bowl, Holiday Bowl, Las Vegas Bowl, Sun Bowl, Emerald Bowl before you get back to their most, most recent trip to the Rose Bowl, which was 2008 under Pete Carroll. They're like the Cowboys of college football. It's like the media and people around those parts really, really want them to be good, but they've been pretty irrelevant. They have. And look, I'll say, I'll say one more thing about this game before, before, we, uh, before we move on, because, uh, I mean, it isn't going to be played for another three years. But, <laughs> but, and that's the thing. It's like, oh, let the anticipation build. Well, clearly, that's already started, so you can't even use that phrase. Normally, when you see these big-time matchups, one of the biggest uh, arguments is, why can't they be on campus? Let's do home and homes. I'm actually glad this one isn't. And I haven't really seen much of that around this. And here's why. Fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. I want to see LSU fans in Las Vegas because that is going to be <laughs> insane. Oh, I mean, man. that is going to be a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sight. You talk about two things that were just made for each other. LSU fans, Las Vegas, Nevada. I, I'm glad this one's not on campus. Me too. I know people down here are used to the humidity, but the heat in Vegas, Musso, with all that drinking during the day, be careful out there. Just saying. I agree with you, but that's a whole different environment of, of heat. It is a whole different environment of heat. I, it, anyone who ever tells you it's a dry heat, so it's not, no, screw them. That's, that's a lie. It's really, really hot still. Hot is hot. All right, guys. Austin, Texas. And in 2019, she should have shown everybody that even more. 